Hi, I'm Linda Doak. I'm an ultra distance runner I'm on the side of Table Mountain overlooking Camps Bay. And today we're going to chat about ultra distance running. People often ask what kind of time commitment they'd be looking at converting from 5K distances to 10K training to half marathon to ultra training. I think the most important aspect of transitioning to longer distances is to not do it too fast. 10% increase in distance a week is really the best way to do it. And a popular misconception is that the longer you run and the further distance you're training for, so you just need to do longer runs. It's not the case at all. You still need to mix up your training. It's important still to do the short stuff, the quick stuff, hill repeats, uh, uphill running, downhill running, and then on the weekend, do longer runs. And that's probably the biggest difference between preparing for five and 10K distances to ultra, is the long runs. The important thing about your long runs is that it's less about clocking up unlimited miles and more about getting the most out of your miles. It's about quality, not quantity. People often ask me if they need to increase their calorie intake in line with increased training distances. As runners, fueling is very important for us and I really don't believe in calorie counting. What I do recommend is that the calories that you take in are definitely quality calories. Make sure the food you're eating is of the best that you, you can afford and that you can take in. If anything, I would say it's advisable to add more protein to your diet. Remember, with your increased mileage, you're putting your muscles and your body through additional strain and protein is great for muscle recovery. One of the questions that came in asked about nutrition on the run and what we should be eating during long runs. Many people can't stomach gels and supplements. Personally, I believe we should be having whole foods, raw foods during a run. Keep it simple. Your stomach's got to do a lot of work during a run. Stick to nuts, dates, seed bars, fructose, fruit, dried fruit is good, date balls, handy bite-sized mouthfuls that you can stash in your pack and eat during your run that can give you energy and not upset your stomach. Some people believe in simple sugars and they enjoy jelly babies on a run, but really you need more than that. Try and keep away from the simple sugars and mix it up with nuts and, and, and natural sugars like dates. But importantly, find what works for you and test them during your long runs. It's often shown that there's a 30% dropout rate at the start of an ultra through injury, illness, or sheer fear of the enormity of the event. In the preparation for an ultra, there's often the temptation to overtrain, to really clock up way too much mileage, which will tire out the body. We want to teach the body to run on tired legs without getting a tired system, because a tired system makes you prone to injury and illness. And as for the sheer fear at the enormity of the challenge of an ultra, yes, running ultra distances can be intimidating but never see that distance as one large chunk because then you will freak yourself out. Rather break it down into 10K increments and tackle each one that way. Then it's far more digestible. And remember, nerves at the start line are scary for everybody, even the elites. And that leads us straight into the next topic. How do you deal with the emotional side of training for and running an ultra? It's as important to train the mind as it is the body. And you need to use your long runs to do this. A good tip is to try and do as much homework about the race that you're about to tackle as you can. So then you can visualize the conditions that you're likely to be running in and try and anticipate what you'll do in each of those circumstances. This will help prepare you and give you confidence when you're standing on that start line. Importantly, know that you will go through tough times. It's guaranteed. That's the nature of the sport. It's the nature of ultra running. It's the challenge of pushing through and achieving and getting beyond those difficult moments. And then the final question we've been sent is, what should we carry during an ultra? Remember, being an ultra, you're going to be out there for that much longer, potentially exposed to a wider variety of conditions. So find out what sort of terrain you're going to be running on, what weather to expect. Also estimate how long you're going to be out there and you don't want to be caught short nutrition-wise or hydration-wise. And remember, the more prepared you are for your ultra-distance run, the more fun you can have, the more space there is to enjoy what you love doing.